Hey, happy campers, Todd here, Great American RV, and today we're gonna to go over Dometic air conditioning systems. We're gonna go over how they operate, a little bit of diagnostics, and also maintenance. So first we're gonna go over operation. Let's step over to our thermostat and do that. Here we have our thermostat. As far as operation on these, you barely wanna to touch them. You don't wanna push down too hard. They have these foam pieces behind them. Once you push down too hard, they will begin not to operate properly. Another common issue that happens with these is generally from pushing them too hard or accidentally touching them, it doesn't take much. We can see that it's at 18 degrees. That is reading in Celsius. So to fix that, we push this up and down arrow right here. We just barely touch them and we're gonna change back to our Fahrenheit. So operation goes generally from the off you're going to have your fan option, which is high, low, or auto. Auto is going to turn off and on as a compressor turns off and on. High is gonna keep that fan on all the time, and low is gonna keep that fan on all the time. They're just at two different speeds. Now, if you stay in this mode, it's not gonna cool or anything. It's just gonna keep the fan circulating. So once we've chosen our desired fan speed, we wanna kick again over to cool. We will set our desired temperature and the AC will run in that auto mode, turning that fan off and on as the compressor turns off and on. Next mode is furnace. Our furnace is not hooked to our rooftop AC. It is gonna be gas and that is gonna come out of the floor vents on our unit. Now going back to the fan operation, like I said, we have auto high and low. On a very hot 100 degree day, you wanna keep that fan on high all the time or at least low. That way in between cycles, it will dry off the fins of that absorption unit and it will lessen the chance that it's gonna freeze up. So like I said, during the summer heat, keep that fan on high all the time kick it on to auto during regular fall or springtime. So we've gone over operation and how to use that thermostat. Next step is we wanna go into a little bit of diagnostics and understanding our AC and some of the symptoms that may cause some problems. So we'll start with our air conditioner not cooling. So a common misconception customers have is whenever they get out to the campground, they plug their unit in, it's 110 degrees inside their unit. They think that the AC is gonna cool it off in an instant. It's not gonna happen. I don't care if you have two, three ACs on that unit, it's gonna take a minute, all right? So one thing we can do to help feel some quick relief is we can open this quick dump valve right here and allow the air to just output out of that ceiling assembly right here. And this will cool this one area off a lot quicker. And once we close it, it'll go back through the ductwork and supply air to the rest of the unit. But the air going into here and the air coming out of here is only going to have a 20 degree difference. That's what we call a split. So if it's 110 degree air going in here, you're only going to have 90 degree air coming out. So until that unit circulates enough cool air throughout your motorhome or, or travel trailer, you're not going to get 80 degree air coming in here yet which would put 60 degree air out. It's gonna take a little bit of time for that air to circulate through that unit and cool the whole thing off. With that being said, it's a great idea to turn your ACs on first thing in the morning, even when it's not hot inside. That way it's really got a kickstart on the day and it can help keep your unit a lot cooler. If there's a lot of in and out traffic uh, at that front door, you're gonna have some issues trying to help keep that unit cool for sure. So we've set that expectation. Next, next question is, my AC really isn't cooling, okay? It's been running all day long. All it's doing is, is just putting out hot air. And if that's the case, we may really have a problem. If we pull this uh, return air down and we can see the coils on our AC and it's not frozen up, all it is doing is just running. We can hear that compressor kicking on or maybe we can't. We might have an issue with the AC itself. With the medic, you have a two year warranty. You give our shop a call or book an appointment online at greatamericanrv.com and we'll go ahead and get that set up. We'll have to pull some amperage readings, pull that temperature split, and give Dometic a call. More than likely, that AC will have to be replaced. So let's say we hear our compressor running, putting out slightly cold air, but not much. Well, at that point, we wanna go ahead and pull that filtration system off if we have the sealant assembly inside, check our coils, and see if they are frozen over. If they are frozen over, like we talked about running that fan on high, we wanna go back and do that, make sure our fan is on high, turn the cool setting off. 
you will have to allow that AC to run probably 30, 40 minutes before it will all defrost and get all the ice off of those fins so the air can circulate back through your unit. Once again, keep the fan on high. This will allow those fins to dry off in between cycles of the compressor. Will it rule out any possibility of that AC freezing up? No, it will not, unfortunately but it will help reduce it for the most part. Once those fins have dried off, go ahead and kick the cool back on and let your AC run like normal. Let's say that our fan isn't coming on or the compressor isn't kicking on. We need 110 volts to make this AC work. We wanna check our breaker panel inside our unit, make sure we haven't tripped a breaker there. We wanna check our power pole, make sure same thing there. If we look at our microwave, it's the only one consistent thing that we get 110 power out of straight from the power pole. So if you have 110 power on your microwave, more than likely you have power from the campground. You wanna check that breaker panel on the interior. Last thing our AC needs is 12 volts. Our thermostat and our circuit board both run on 12 volts. So you also wanna check that 12 volt fuse down there and make sure that that's not blown. This will affect operation of the thermostat, mainly if we have no power there. Pretty good indicator that might be what the issue is. Maintenance. Well, first things first, the common thing that you wanna do on your unit is pull this screen out and clean it. Picks up dog hair, dust, debris, everything, all right? Mainly dog hair, so if you got pets, you wanna do this every time you go camping. Otherwise, at least once a month or every other time you go camping, take a damp cloth, wipe it over this, clean it off with the air compressor, whatever you feel like you need to do, and keep this clean. Otherwise, it will suffocate that air conditioner and it will cause it to freeze up. Next thing maintenance-wise, wanna check that divider in there. We wanna make sure that we're not mixing cold air. That can also cause the issue of freezing up. If it, that cold air that is coming out is circulating in with that return air, you're forcing too much cold air in there, causes humidity and condensation, and then it will freeze up. So here we're gonna check this one. If we have any issues, we're gonna use this silver HVAC tape that can be found at any one of our camping stores as well as any normal hardware store. So on these ceiling assembly ACs, our return air is where the air sucks in, your heat rises, so it's gonna suck in the warmer air, and this is our output side where the cold air goes, and it'll generally go through the ducts inside your unit, come out of there. When this air mixes like that, it's gonna cause the fins up there to freeze up, and then your AC is not gonna cool anymore. So we can fix that by retaping all of this with this HVAC tape, this silver tape. So we can see on this divider here, the white has a sticky adhesive on here, but over time it will begin to pull away and it's not sealed up really good around the sides here. So these are the areas of concentration where air is going to leak through on that divider. So here we have our finished product. We taped around these wires right here that was going into the attic. We don't want any air being sucked in from there. We also have taped every edge of this divider right here on the top, bottom, and sides and make sure we have no air coming out. We have a duct right here. This is leading out to our vents. You wanna make sure you don't tape over that. We wanna leave that open. Next tip is up top on our AC. We would remove this top cover right here and do a little service on our condenser coil. So in removing your shroud, you wanna make sure to be careful and not damage any of the fins on the back. That's part of what you're coming here to check, is you wanna make sure that these fins are free of any debris, leaves, dirt, uh, dirt divers, any funk like that. Make sure that your power is off on your AC. Go click that breaker off. Before you come up here, you don't wanna have any ex unexpected power ons of the air conditioner. So once you're up here and you have access, you wanna get some AC condenser uh, coil cleaner. Take it, shake it up real good, and spray it onto these coals, probably twice if they're real dirty, and just allow all that stuff to come down. You can hit it with a water hose if you need, a light, light hit with the water hose, so like a spray mode or something like that, you don't wanna hit it with a jet because once again, that'll damage these coals. So if any of these fins are damaged, you can get a fin tool at any local hardware store and straighten those fins out. This is important because this is where the air circulates to cool the, uh, the unit inside. So if these fins are blocked off or if they're blocked up with a bunch of dirt and debris, then your AC isn't gonna function like it should. So that'll keep it from cooling your unit and it's gonna keep you hot and sweaty. 
All right, we've gone over operation, a little bit of diagnostics, and what we need to do to maintain our unit on a regular basis. If you're still having issues or you don't feel comfortable doing those types of service items to your unit, give us a call at any one of our service departments or book that appointment online at greatamericanrv.com. Thanks for watching. Like us, share, subscribe, all those fun things on YouTube, Facebook, and TikTok, wherever you found us today. Keep watching here at Great American RV, where we bring the how-to to you. Making memories, one